Luke 22. Just going to read a few verses. Luke 22, we'll begin our reading, verse 31. The Bible says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for the work you've already done. And Lord, you know in my heart, I was content just to close her down, go to the house. Lord, I believe you have a thought for us tonight. Now, Lord, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. You'd continue to do a work here tonight. Speak to our hearts. Lord, break up our fallow ground and then break out revival. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Notice a few things about these verses. First of all, notice the pressure to be applied in verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He wants to strain you. He wants to put you through a pressure cooker. He's wanting to do everything he can to destroy, destroy you and suck the very life out of you. Can I say, when we do become callous on God, when we do get to the place uh, 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 where we take for granted the things of God, we're just tempting the Lord to let Satan have us, that he might sift us, that we might fully appreciate the blessings afforded us. Uh, I don't desire to ever see anybody go through the sifter, uh, but if it takes the sifter uh, in order to bring revival, we ought to welcome the sifter. Uh, notice the pressure to be applied, but also notice the prayer that was offered uh, in verse number 32. He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Uh, notice the Lord didn't say, I'm going to get you out of sifter. No, he said, Peter, got good news. I've prayed for you. Amen. Not that God would deliver you, but that your faith fail not. A lot of times the Lord allows us to go, go through things uh, that our faith would be strengthened, Amen. not destroyed. Hmm? But notice not only that, notice uh, uh, the prescription given. Look what he said in verse 32. And when thou art converted, the Lord knew he was going to fail. He said, when thou art converted, when thou return, when thou repent, when thou get right, strengthen thy brethren. Hmm? Can I say sometimes we go through things and the Lord brings us through them that we might help others. Hmm? He gave him a prescription. But then notice the pride exhibited. <laughs> Look at old good old brother Peter. Verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and into, and into death. Isn't it amazing Peter was always telling the Lord what to do? <laughs> Peter was a good Baptist. Catholics came, he was a, claimed he's the first pope. No, he was a good, downright, saved Jewish Baptist. That's what he was. Amen. Lord, I'm ready to go with thee to prison and to death. I, I've already got this thing mapped out. Uh, can I tell you what our problem is? We think we already know it all. We think we've arrived. We think we know more than the Lord. Uh, uh, we think we know what it's going to take to bring revival. We think we know what's uh, best for us in our lives. Uh, we think we've got a handle on it. You better watch your sorry, stinking pride. It'll give you a quick trip to the sifter. Mm? It was his pride. Can I say sometimes God just needs to knock pride out of us. Mm? Notice the pronouncement foretold. Look at verse 34. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. The Lord says, oh, you're ready to go to prison and death with me? He said, you're not even going to make it till morning and you're going to deny me three times. And we know he did. He's even cussing the Lord's name and warming by the devil's fire before the daylight breaks. Can I say, the Bible says in Jeremiah, uh, uh, no man knoweth his own heart. It's deceitfully wicked who knoweth it. You don't even know yourself what you're capable of outside the grace of God. You know the best place you can be? Right up near the heart of God. You need to draw nigh to God and let God draw nigh to you. Uh, because if not, your pride will take over and it will mess you up, friend. 
and it heads you to heads you to the sifter. Well, I, I, I was uh, I was reading all this, and I thought I really want you to see. Look back up in verse number thirty-one. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Now, if you study the book of Job, chapter number one, you find that the devil comes before the throne of God. Uh, He's been walking to and fro in the course of the work, uh, world, seeking whom he may devour. And we know that the Lord brings Job up to the devil. Job didn't even uh, uh, enter the devil's mind. Satan didn't even think about Job because uh, Job was a man that loved God. He sued evil, uh, sacrificed to God every day, uh, loved God, lived for God, even sacrificed on behalf of his family. God brought Job up to Satan. And Satan said, oh man, you blessed him too good. There's no way he's going to turn, take all that he has. And you know the story. But notice, the devil brings Peter up to the Lord. He says, Satan hath desired to have you. I'm going to preach just for a few minutes on this thought. Being in Beelzebub's bullseye. Being in Beelzebub's bullseye. Beelzebub's another name they call the devil. It's where the term Baal comes from. I want to say, when he's got his sights on you, what are you going to do when the Lord says, Mark, Mark, Satan hath desired to have you. Clint, Clint, Satan has desired to have you. He's got his bullseye on you. Mm -hmm. Justin, he's got his bullseye on you. He wants you, boy. Mm -hmm. Peter, you've got a prime example right there in the Scriptures. He wants you. Huh? Gerald, huh? Oh, it's been going good a couple of years. All of a sudden, you, you know, the job situation turned, and now you've got to spend more time with Mama and all that stuff. But now Satan desires to have you. Hmm? Job didn't knock you out of church, so he wants you. Put his bullseye on you. Brother Steve, he wants you. You've been going down there to Falmouth, being a blessing in boy. Now he's desired to have you. Let's see what Steve Davis is made of. Hmm? Brother Larry, the bullseye's on you. Hmm? Elf, you're in the sights. Hmm? You're the target. Hmm? Being in Beelzebub's bullseye. He wants you. Well, got to thinking about Satan. And putting a mark on somebody and desiring to have somebody. Got to thinking about all this. This little portion of Scripture. Can I say this first of all? That he only targets those he fears. He was afraid of Peter. Yeah, Peter was full of pride, but Peter wasn't afraid to stand up for what he believed in. He was afraid of Peter. You know, we read on. Peter's about ready to chop off some guy's ear. Huh? He was not shy or backwards. I don't know if he had Holy Ghost boldness or if he's just half-cocked redneck. I don't know. But he stood up for what he believed in. He did love the Lord. Hmm? Matter of fact, the Lord asked him three times after he fed him, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know with all things you know I love you. He did love the Lord. And the devil feared him. That's why he desired to have him. Why would the devil fear him? Well, read the book of Acts. Peter stood up, preached one message, and 3,000 souls were added to the church. Uh, uh, Peter went on to do great things for God. Uh, and the devil was worried about him. He feared him. Uh, uh, can I say tonight, uh, without any reservations, uh, hey, he didn't like what was going on around here. Uh, he don't like it when folks get to confess and sin. Uh, he don't like it when church members get to forgiving one another. Uh, he don't like it uh, when folks uh, uh, get out of their normal ruts uh, and they start standing up and testifying, uh, start standing up and witnessing. Uh, he don't like it. Uh, can I say he don't like what's been going around the Emmanuel Baptist Church uh, and he's put a bullseye on us because uh, he's just fearful. Uh, God might break this thing out. Uh, I'm getting enough of you saying, Preacher, I'm uh, praying for it. Uh, I'm uh, wanting God to do something. Uh, hey, it was good to see Brother Greg, but I'd have liked to have kept him around for a while. Uh, hey, uh, the devil's afraid and he only puts a target on those things he is afraid of. Uh, can I say he fears uh, uh, that this church being on the verge of revival. He fears that. 
He fears the church being on the verge of revelation. Can I say... What's wrong with the independent Baptist movement is we're stuck in the 50s. Amen. There are independent, fundamental, Bible-thumping, Bible-believing preachers that'll stand up and tell you they don't believe revival's possible. God's wanting to show them. He's wanting to reveal who He really is. He's wanting to say, be still and know that I'm God. Uh, he's wanting to say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, he's wanting to say, uh, hey, uh, take a back seat and watch what I can do. Uh, he's on the verge of revealing some things. Right, He's doing some things around here that are kind of unusual. What he's wanting to do is do it so well in here that it gets out there. And the devil's worried he fears that the church is on the verge of revelation. Can I say this? He's fearful that the church is on the verge of relevance. You know, he didn't mind it, Brother Clint, when we was just a handful over in the old building. And he, uh, 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 it, 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 it kind of started bothering him when this place started going up and he sent some wolves in uh, and had some to try to tear some things down. But we're just about ready to become relevant. Hmm? I'm looking forward to the day, not when the law enforcement's directing traffic, but God starts directing traffic. Amen. When they start going to a false church and end up here and getting saved. Amen. Huh? Well, I was going down there, but something told me to go here. God don't work that way. Well, ever since Miss Lisa, she's driving by, and God said, you need to be in there. What happened? She come over here and got saved. Uh, hey, uh, I like it when he starts making us relevant. Uh, I like it uh, uh, when hey, uh, all the other ones start saying, what's happening down there to Manuel? Uh, they don't have a rock band. Uh, uh, they don't have a, a satellite preacher. Uh, they don't have all this. Uh, but one thing they got, they got God on the scene. Uh, and the devil's afraid. He only targets those he fears. And I say, secondly, he only targets those on fire. If your wood's wet, you don't have to worry about the devil. He's already got you right where he wants you. I want to tell you something. You get on fire for God, he gets worried. And he puts a bullseye on you. Huh? You can't convince me that he didn't try and kill Mark and I. Huh? Why? Because he knew Mark was going to get up and sing that song maybe. I don't know. Mark can't get enough. He only targets those that he fears, those that are on fire. Hmm? You ever see a dead Christian ever get up and say, boy, the devil's really been messing with me. <laughs> they come and go like always. Never any problems. You never hear them testify. Never hear anything. They just never any problems. They just come and go, you know. I can tell you, somebody gets on fire and wants to do something for God, tries to be a witness to the family or the community on the job, uh, starts seeking God, showing up for everything, got a fervent in her soul, and I guarantee you, say, boy, the devil's been fighting me all week. Why? Because you're on fire. Hmm? Can I say he only targets those with fruit? He wants to put a worm in your apples. He wants to dry up and rot your fruit. But you know that fig tree without any fruit on it? He, he wasn't worried about that. But them trees in full bloom, those are ones he targets to destroy. Those are the ones he wants to dry up the soil around them so they don't get any nutrients. Uh, so there won't be any fruit. I remind you, Jesus said in John 15 that it is ordained of God that we bring forth much fruit. Why don't we bring forth fruit? Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Because we don't do anything for God. We get a desire to do something for God, we'll bring forth fruit. Now listen, it don't matter that some bring forth 30 and some bring forth 100. All that matters is we bring forth fruit. Can I say, you need to bloom where you're planted. You need to do what God wants you to do. Not everybody can preach. Not everybody can sing. Not everybody can bring forth a hundredfold, but some can bring forth thirty. By the way, the widow with the widow's might, 
She was a hundredfold Christian. Are you listening? She gave all she had. Huh? God don't expect Brother Ray to give what Brother Gerald gives. Brother Gerald give what Brother Ray... But he just wants you to be who you are. But if you're getting all you can get from God and being all you're supposed to... It don't matter if you're 30, 60, 100. All that matters is you're bringing forth fruit. And the devil don't like it. He wants to target your fruit. You know what happens, Brother Justin? You lead somebody to the Lord, they might lead a hundred to the Lord. So he wants your fruit before you lead the one. Hmm? That's what he wants to do. Sorry, devil. Hmm? He just targets your fruit. Hmm? Can I say this? He targets those walking by faith. He wants you walking by sight. Hmm? That's what's wrong with Christianity. Look around and see a half empty building. I look around and see a half full one. Well, it don't matter if there's nobody here except the Lord. Amen. Are you listening? We need to walk by faith. We need to just believe God, trust God, mind God, regardless of what we see. Hmm? All Christianity is based on sight. You know why people have quit going out and inviting folks to church, knocking on doors, and because they say we don't see any fruit. Well, first of all, you're seeing. Seeing isn't believing. The reason we go is because He told us to go. The fruit's up to Him. But I'm going by faith because I know if we plant enough seed, He'll send somebody to water it, and one of these days will be a harvest. And we may never see them walk through the doors of our church. They may go somewhere else and get saved. They may be saved to be out of church, go back to church. There. And that's all up to God. All we do is go. It's not based on what we see. Huh? I'd put a big mirror up here so you can see what I'm looking at while I'm preaching. It's not by sight. Because you know what we can't see? We can't see that little flame flickering in the heart. It's by faith. And he targets those who are walking by faith. Hmm? Can I say those that never do anything for God, never trust God, never... He don't care about that person. He's got them right where he wants them. But those who are stepping out on faith, who are just believing God, or taking the messages and the word of God to heart and just saying, God, I'm going to believe you, I'm going to trust you. If the whole world comes down, crumbling down on me, I'm just going to believe you. That's the one he's interested in. That's who he's getting to. Let me say this last one. Being in Beelzebub's bullseye. He targets those with focus, with a vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You know why the spirit of apathy happens? Because we don't come focused on Him. Jesus asked the question what did they come out to see? A reed blowing in the wind? When they come to see John the Baptist, what did they come to see? He said, a prophet? Oh, more than a prophet. Why did you come tonight? What was your focus? What is our vision? Corporately, as the Emmanuel Baptist Church, our vision right now ought to be revival what we've been preaching on for a month. We'll be seeking revival. That God break one out and God start saving and God start doing things so we can have a, 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 a rescue mission, so we can have a, a more jail service, so we can have a, a, a more opportunities to minister to folks and do sorts of things. All that's up to God. But our vision, our focus ought to be revival and revival starts inwardly. What is our focus? He's only fearful and only targets those that have some focus. Folks that are ostriches with their head buried in the sand just come to church and sit down and get up and leave and have no focus, have no desire, have no faith. Have no... He don't care about that person. That Sunday morning only crowd, do you think they really upset the devil? The crowd shows up at 11 and leaves at 12.01, you think that really upset No. Why do you think he gets them up to leave early? To distract you. You know who he's after? He's after that Wednesday morning, that Wednesday night crowd. 
He's after that crowd that really wants something from God, focused on what he wants. That's in his targets. Can I say nobody should sign up and say, Lord, put me through the sifter today. But one of the greatest honors you'll ever have as a Christian is that, desi that Satan desires to have you. Because that means you are really being who Christ called you to be. True worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. Said all that say this. I believe with every fiber of my being, Satan has our church in the bullseye. He's worried. He's putting pressure. He's doing everything he can to discourage you because if he can discourage you, then you stop what God wants done. Everything God wants to do around here hinges on you and I minding God. So tonight, it's okay to be in the bullseye. It's okay for him to pull the trigger because my God has a shield that stops everything he shoots at me. Don't be afraid of the boogeyman. Fear him who's able to destroy your soul both in hell. Are you listening? We're to fear the Lord. But we're to follow him. We're to walk by faith. We're to be focused on his desires for our life. We're to get on board on this stuff. Huh? The greatest, greatest testimony of our church is that the devil's worried. Too many Baptist churches he's not worried about at all. You ought to be worried. Let me ask you a question. You're doing your part? Again, he only targets those he fears, those on fire, those with fruit, those walking by faith, and those with focus. How is it with you? Does he desire to have you? Oh, I know he wants the church, but how about you? The church is made up of individuals. How about you? Does he desire to have you? Does he desire to destroy your mind and your life? The thief coming up, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Is he targeting you? Well, I learned a long time ago, when he comes after you, you just need to draw nigh to God. Right. Amen. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Hmm? One scent of the lily... And the hound of hell flees. Just get close to Jesus and the devil will lose all sight of you. Listen, is he targeting you? Why don't you draw nigh to the Lord tonight and he'll help you. And the devil will have to flee. And there's no greater place or safer place to be right smack dab in the center of the will of God. He can fight, he can scrape, he can do whatever he wants to, but he can't do anything to you. He can't even harm one hair on our head unless the Lord gives him permission. Amen. Has he desired to have you? Greatest thing that will ever be said at you at the judgment seat of Christ is that Satan desired to have you because you fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You were on fire. You had fruit. You were focused and he feared you. Does he fear you? Or does he even know who you are tonight? My dear friends, be encouraged tonight that we're on track. That we're on track. The devil's afraid. But is he afraid of you as an individual? Hmm? So I don't know. Why don't you ask the Lord? Lord, am I all that I should be for you? Lord will let you know. Who let Peter know that Satan desired to have him? The Lord. When the Lord lets you know that Satan's on you, you know what you need to do? You don't need to be prideful like Peter. Oh, Lord, well, I know he's got me. I, I'm not even sure. Why wouldn't he? No, you say, Lord, help thou mine unbelief. Amen. And the Lord will help you. Let's all stand.